Bridge Capital. Joining us, Anthony, good to see you. Good to be here, Scott. An incredible week. Um, certainly, we've heard from a, a number of important voices on our program this week. I know that you've talked to a, a number in your own right. What's your big takeaway? Well, listen, I mean, it was bound to happen. You have a full on decentralization and democratization of trading. Uh, that the, the trader now through the palm, you know, the smartphone is getting all the same information as, say, a Goldman Sachs prop trader in the mid to late 90s. And so this was bound to happen. Uh, these people are smarter than people think. I do believe that Leon Koopman is going to be right, though, that it ends in tears for many people, uh, because ultimately, as you know, what's happening, and this is what got Robin Hood in trouble yesterday, is the pyramid scheme on the way up in terms of the leverage buying of those names that everyone on your show and most Wall Street professionals know that those names are likely fundamentally impaired. Uh, and so what I would say to people is we're in the age of decentralization. Uh, somebody like a, a point 72, a Steve Cohen, let's say, I would never bet against him. He's adapting right now to this new reality. And so, as you know, Skybridge has a lot of money with point 72. But on the same side, we've taken a barbell approach where we've got money in Bitcoin, which I think is the epicenter of this uh, democratization and this decentralization of finance. So well, I, uh, I would say we have a, a leg on uh, on both sides, if you will. Scott. I, I, know, I know I know why you're talking Bitcoin. It's your new product. I know you want to you want to talk about that. We'll get to that in, in a second. Um, you, in, in your own right, helped democratize a, a part of the market, that being the hedge fund business, right? I mean, that's essentially what the fund of funds industry did. It allowed uh, more, you know, average Joes, if you will, uh, who don't have quite the amount of capital to get into a hedge fund itself, per se, to at least have access to some of the better and most well-known managers uh, out there. So how do you think that industry changes, um, if at all, as a result of what we've witnessed this week? Well, I, I think it's definitely going to change. The, 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 the best players in that space, whether it's the Steve Cohens or the Dan Loeb's, or the Josh Friedman's of that space, they adapt and they pivot to the new reality of what they're dealing with. So will their short exposures change? Will they look at their risk management tools differently? Will they make assumptions differently about these sort of bee swarms that could potentially attack their positions. Sure, all of that stuff is going to happen. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, the hedge fund industry is alive and well and thriving, $3.6 trillion and counting. Uh, when I came on the show last year and we were talking about the debacle during the pandemic, I predicted those adaptations and look how the hedge fund industry did at the back half of the year. And so for Skybridge Capital in the fund that you're referencing, Series G, uh, we have a $25,000 minimum to $50,000 minimum, depending on the platform. And that gives people an access point, And then they can get exposure to some of these fantastic money managers. And so uh, th that, that industry is not going away, Scott. If anything, this type of activity uh, will make that industry more needed for people that are looking for a source of increasing returns and reducing long-term volatility. I'm trying to think of sort of what all of this is a, a product of. Some suggest that this is all a product of a frothy market that we're currently in, and you see things like this in those instances. You know, retail getting incredibly excited about the state of the market. You know, respectfully, launching a, a, bit, a Bitcoin fund at this particular time when Bitcoin, you know, has run up uh, a lot. Do you subscribe at all to that current state of the market? Well, listen, I would, I would bifurcate the two. I would say, yes, there's a lot of foam in the market. Uh, there's easy money in the market and the leverage is cheap right now. And that is driving a lot of this stuff. I think it's antithetical what the people are doing through the Reddit strategy, though. I get that they're trying to squeeze the shorts, and I understand that whole idea behind it. But I just think long term, it's a very bad strategy. And you could get caught in the vortex of that. If those names drop 50, 60 percent, which is not impossible given the run up uh, and you're on the wrong side of it and you've got that in your margin account, you could wipe out your account. So I would caution people that are doing that to just be super, super careful. But on the Bitcoin things, Scott, I think that's a different thing. That's an evolving monetary network. And I recognize the price movement. 
But what I would suggest, if you look at Amazon, which is a retail network, or even Facebook or Google, uh, these other things being social networks or a search network, in the case of Bitcoin, that is an emerging, growing, still in the early adoption phase, monetary network. And I just take you back to Amazon when it was 12 years old after its initial public offering. It looked like it was very expensive. But if you bought Amazon then, you've had a 64 to 1 move in Amazon over the ensuing 12 years. And so what we see in Bitcoin is something totally different. This is a monetary network that is institutionalizing before us. And again, to that democratization issue, uh, we, we at Skybridge tried to make the fund accessible, low fees at 75 basis points, 25 to $50,000 minimums again, just so people could get a toe in the water. Right. I'm certainly not recommending large allocations, however, because the stuff is volatile, but a one to 3% allocation could really help somebody's portfolio. Sure. Um, you know, it does come with Bitcoin up, you know, at, at 36,000. I think that that's our only point. What we've tried to, you know, do this week, I think, too, um, even though it's been somewhat misconstrued and, and purposefully warped, um, is give people an understanding of the risk, the underlying risk that exists in, in the marketplace um, in, in a lot of this stuff. Carrie Firestone has a, a question for you, Anthony. Hi, Hi Anthony. Carrie. So, he, so here's the question. For decades, the hedge fund industry has maintained that your risk is reduced because of the ability to short as well as go long. And this has been a marketing effort, to some extent extremely successful in selling across the platform to institutional investors, pension funds, state plans, teachers unions, etc. So now we've got a situation where perhaps there's a new risk that no one had foreseen. And I'm wondering how the industry is going to address it if, in fact, they have to adjust whatever they uh, suggest is their beta or correlation or market risk that the investor is taking. Well, listen, I think I think that's the best question out there. And I think they're already assessing that. You know, what you've got, and not to get overly complicated, is gamma riskier, an unforeseen event where there's effectively a bee swarm on your short position. And so now you have to sort of, uh, you have to widen out the standard deviation of outcomes that you think are going to happen in those, in those positions. So perhaps you'll have more shorts on uh, that will be less concentrated, and then you'll have stop outs on your shorts uh, to prevent yourself from getting into the situation that happened with GameStop. But I think if you're, if you're making the point that uh, hedge funds have been successful at explaining their strategy where they have this ambidexterity in the markets, they can go long and short, they can do capital structure arbitrage, mezzanine arbitrage in the fixed income space, things like that, uh, that's what's made the industry successful. And the better managers actually have the track record to back it up net of their fees. And so this is the reason why I always tell people, be cautious, sure, have money in stocks, have it in bonds, but you should have some in the alternative asset space. And we now believe a very small amount, but certainly some in things like Bitcoin. Yeah. But yes, they will make those changes, Kerry. That's happening right now as we speak, literally. And you're certainly not the only one uh, recommending a strategy like that as we're learning. Certainly some tried and true and extraordinarily successful people in the investment world are recommending that.